Hello. I'd like to welcome you back to my channel and I hope that you're finding things that are inspirational, helpful, and that they do make you think and look over uh, what you've been hearing and what you've been educated with and make you double think and find some things that I hope will uh, maybe challenge some things that uh, may actually uh, reinforce good things in your life. I hope it reinforces the good. So today, I've got the best book on understanding and critiquing philosophies. And this is a book uh, you would never expect to find me recommending a book by, by him on philosophy. But he actually did a very, very good job. And that's not just my opinion. Uh, the late Paul Johnson, uh, the historian and uh, journalist who just recently passed away, said that in his book Intellectuals that this was one of his very, very best books. Uh, a guy named Bertrand Russell. And here it is. Bertrand Russell, the history. The his, <laughs> history of Western philosophy. And it's obviously a thick book. There's a lot to discuss. And he actually does a very good job, as I've said. Um, I don't think his dealing with Christianity is very good. I think it's the most mediocre part of the book. But... In dealing with the philosophers that he goes to, it's evident that he's read the original works, he's read their critics, he's read their uh, people who are stand behind them, and that uh, I know that uh, when he goes on to ancient philosophy, in particular pre-Socratics and Aristotle, uh, Plato, and Socrates, that, that he is uh, first rate. He does a very good job, and the other ones too. Um, so, just to give you the ancient philosophy first. And the other philosophies, uh, modern philosophy, Catholic philosophies, and to, to the present day, it goes uh, pretty much down, ends with John Dewey and himself, and himself, Alfred North Whitehead, and Principia Mathematica, which I've read bits of it. There's actually some very interesting stuff there, which uh, has a lot to do, I think, think with uh, object-oriented programming, and that does have a kind of an... Um, inspirational tie all the way back to Plato and the theory of ideas, but uh, that's beside the point. So, he deals with the philosophers honestly, as far as I can tell. Um, and I occasionally I do have some, uh, personally some cases where I've disagreed with him. Yes, it's okay to disagree with Lord Bertrand Russell. And here's a case. So, I'd advise you to get a hard copy mark it up, um, look it over, and wherever you find something that you want to look at more more clearly. I was apparently last time looking at Plotinus and Neoplatonism, and have at it. Uh, and I recommend this book, in fact, to pastors. If you uh, someone who's uh, preaching and teaching the Word of God who is near to a university would probably find this very helpful because people are always going to be bringing up, uh, di being, coming into contact with the university with different philosophies, and he gives the pluses and minuses and examines them. One of the big things that we do have with many people is that they fall fast for bad ideas. And philosophies of the past all have their strengths and their weaknesses, the places where they're logical or illogical, where they um, may misunderstand something. Uh, one of the big things I've noticed with philosophers myself, and I may actually do this, is they often misrepresent, misunderstand history. What actually happened, and if they're basing their argument on what actually happened up to that point, they often misconstrue it in many ways. Sometimes I think it's unintentional, just, they just simply misunderstand. Sometimes I think it's deliberate. Uh, uh, Karl Marx was known for really uh, playing fast and loose with the truth in a number of his writings. and. As far as we're, I just mentioned Marx, um, Russell in here has has a pretty good critique of Marx. If you've listened by any chance to uh, Jordan Peterson's critique of uh, the Communist Manifesto, it's, they come to a lot of the same points. So I don't know that uh, uh, Jordan Peterson read, uh, read this book, but uh, the fact that they uh, seem to have... Uh, Two such people have come to 
a number of the same conclusions about Marx does seem to show that the critique there does have some some real weight to it. So I would advise you to, uh, you know, you can pick this up. This isn't that expensive. A student who's going through college could pick this up and go through it uh, um, throughout your college, uh, throughout your time in college. You don't have to be a philosophy major because uh, touch, touch some of the things with guys like John Dewey, education. If you're in education, you'll run across John Dewey, again, Marx, and uh, literature, Byron, Lord Byron, yeah, philosophy of Byron, and uh, Aristotle, Christianity, history, the Dark Ages, and uh, um, science, uh, Francis Bacon, uh, so on, Italian Re Renaissance, Machiavelli, Erasmus, Reformation, Counter-Reformation, so... Um, th there's a lot in there, and again, you don't have to agree with him, but let him make you think. Let his critiques make you think. So that's the best book. I'll give you some, this is, we're going into the bonus round now. Um, something, 10 Philosophical Mistakes, and this is something that's also worth, worth picking up if you can find. You can find this often in a uh, used book, so I, and he goes over a number of, uh, Modern philosophies from, uh, he's Adler, passed away not that long ago. He's a man from the 20th century. And uh, I give him credit that he actually did seriously consider the Bible and read through it. And which I, I don't think that Bertrand Russell really did that. But I think that he, he had contact with some of the classical uh, people like Benjamin Jowett who were clergymen. And I kind of think he picked up his understanding of Christianity from them. And, he really saw it as a, as being removing the freedom, sexual freedom from his life, but that's another matter. But uh, yeah, this is about 200 pages, 10 philosophical mistakes, and uh, this, you know, things about consciousness, questions of philosophy, um, things about consciousness, intellect, knowledge, uh, moral values, uh, many of the big questions of philosophy. Um, you can use these. This is a starting point. Again, continuing with the bonus round. I picked this up also. I, it's a few years ago. I'm going back to it again. It covers a lot of the same ground that Bertrand Russell does, but some of the uh, more modern people and actually um, some of the modern uh, Christian philosophers like uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer um, and uh, goes on to uh, some of the Christian philosophers, uh, Cornelius Van Til, Karl Barth, um, Existentialism, some of the religious uh, um, people like uh, B Rudolf Bultmann, Paul Tillich, and oh yeah, Hegel's in there too, and uh, a number of the other people. And final conclusions on Christian Christianity and philosophy, which uh, pick this up too if you, fi you can find it. Um, also on YouTube. <laughs> um, third thing with the broken. Uh, with the bonus round, uh, Michael Sigru, I believe that's the uh, correct pronounce of it, pronunciation, and he had a number of uh, very well done lectures too, which have been uploaded to YouTube. I recommend going over those two. And again, this is all exploration. I'm not recommending any one philosophy to you. It's a place, um, Socrates said that the unexamined life is not worth living, it's been attributed to him, and uh, I would kind of take that as an axiom look that up and uh, axiom from so um, continue exploring and understanding and I would encourage you to do so for the Bible too I uh, take that up and the last person I'm going to bring up is a person who uh, one of the philosophers mentioned in Colin Brown Francis Schaeffer who was working through uh, all these philosophies and he came to the Bible wanted to seriously know what the Bible said he became a Christian became an evangelist and you know there, there's a good deal of information on him on YouTube also, and especially the series, which is based on this book. The book and the series are not quite the same thing, so you'll find information in the book that is in the series and information in the series which isn't in the book. So if you really want to get into this, you'll want to uh, probably get the book in some way also. And Nancy Piercy and Chuck Olson did a sequel to this not that long ago. How, that, how Shall We Now Live, I believe is the name of that. But uh, I'll have uh, links to the Michael Segru's, uh, um channel and also 
to the playlist on this book at the end as far so that ends the bonus round here but there's there's a lot that's worth thinking about and a lot going around our culture a lot in our history a lot of history of thought too but there have been a number of people such as francis schaefer and some others c.s lewis um even uh c.e.m jode who uh you may never have heard of but his books are worth picking up also he was kind of a popularizer but his works are uh, well worth reading so that uh concludes this now i hope this has been helpful and i thank you for your time thank you for your attention and uh if the unexamined life isn't worth living uh considering some of the philosophies and considering what we're coming in contact and how, how our culture got the way but for people believing some of the things that came through these guys is worth considering so again uh, god bless you thank you <laughs>